would assume you know nothing about Dreamweaver. I'm going to make this so simple. We're going to create a website totally from scratch, starting from the complete beginning here. So we're going to show you how to make a Dreamweaver CSS-based website from total scratch. So let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to do here is go to File, New, or I can click right here, Create HTML File. So we're going to create HTML, or I can simply go to File, New, or a Command key N for Macintosh, or Control key N for Windows. So we're going to create a new HTML file. Now, this new HTML file, there's nothing on the page. Okay, we're going to stay away from code. You don't even have to talk to the code. I'm going to show you this simple, simple, simple way. Now, what you should do when creating a site from scratch is you should define the site in its root folder. Now, here's a simple way to do this. We're simply going to go to site. We're going to pick new site. Now, this only has to be done one time. Now, I have to be Dreamweaver CS 5.5. CS4 is slightly different, but it's the same concept. So we're going to type in our domain name, minus the dot .com, minus the dot .net. So for argument's sake, let's say it's just my domain name. Now, web files, whether it's a JPEG file or an HTML file, should be lowercase, no space. If you have to have space, put a hyphen or an underscore. So I simply typed in my domain name. Now, I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel here. I'm going to copy that. Command C, copy that. Control C, Windows. Now, Dreamy needs to know where we're going to keep this file. Now, once you put the file someplace, don't move it. Otherwise, Dreamy is going to get confused. So how do we get here? Let's review. We went to Site. New site. Okay, now I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste what I just copied. Control V, paste, Control Command V, Macintosh. Now I'm going to select the root folder. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go someplace on my desktop and I'm going to create a folder called My Websites, which is right here. Okay, now you can put this folder any place you want. We, we're just going to create a folder called My Websites. Double click. Inside that website folder, we created the folder called my domain name. Double click. So now I'm going to tell Dreamweaver that this is my root folder. This is where all my files for this particular website are going to go inside this folder. So I'm going to choose that folder. That folder becomes your root directory. All files, all JPEGs, etc., go inside the root directory. So, in a different video series, I show you how to set up the FTP to publish your web server. We're not doing it in this video server. In this video series, I'm just showing you how to set up a site, new site. So, I simply hit save. Now, when I go to save this file, file save, command S or control S, if I'm not in my root directory, watch this. If I happen to be on my desktop, as an example, or in some other folder, I can just hit site root. That will automatically go to my site's root, which is this folder, which is inside my website folder, which is on my desktop. So this file is going to be the home page. The home page is always called index, index.html. That's going to be the home page for this particular site. And I simply hit save. Now, what we haven't done, which is very, very important to understand, is not titled, title the document, the document's title. This is not to be confused with the name of the file. The name of the file is index.html. The title of the page is what appears inside of a search engine. So we're going to put in name of the site dot com. And let's say in the wholesale coffee business. So I could simply put here wholesale coffee. And let's say we offer free shipping. So we're going to put in free shipping. Now, that's going to come up in a search engine. So the information that goes into the title 
has nothing to do with the name of the file. This is the title that ends up inside of a web browser. This is what gets picked up by a search engine. Now, before we go further, I just want to share with you some basic concepts here. We're working with classic mode. You can work with different modes inside of Dreamweaver. We're going to simply go to classic mode. This mode just changes your palette orientation. So to keep it simple, so we're on the same page here, we're just going to classic mode. Now, notice I have all these palettes over here to the right. Okay, now half these palettes I don't need. I'm going to reset classic mode. So this is what it looks like by default. So to keep it less confusing, I'm going to make this so simple, it's child's play. I'm going to take my CSS palette and drag it out. I'm going to take my files palette and drag it out. These palettes I have no use for. I'm going to take these palettes here and I'm going to close them. So the only thing I have here is my CSS palette, which we're going to use in just a second. And I have my files palette. So if you click this icon right here, this is my local files. This is my remote file. Now we haven't set up a remote server for this. So we're not going to do it in this video series. So this is my local files index pages inside my root directory. This is my remote files. If this window was closed, it'd be under window, window, files. So command and shift F or control shift F for windows. Command shift F Macintosh closes. So the only thing I need to see right now is my CSS palette and all my other default, default palettes. Now, important step here, since this is not a typing class, we're just going to copy and paste some text that we can get from the web. So I'm going to go to Firefox, and inside of Google, I'm just going to type in I-P-S-U-M. Google, I'm going to type in I-P-S-U-M. That's going to take us to this generated website to generate text. I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel here. I'm just going to copy and paste some text. I'm going to put in five columns of text. I'm going to type in five down here. It generates some text. Okay, I'm going to simply select these five paragraphs. I'm going to copy that. Command C, Control C. Go back to Dreamweaver and paste. Okay, simple, simple, simple. The only thing we did here was copy and paste. Now we have content on the page. Now, we're going to stay away from code, but I just want to share with you some basic HTML understanding so you, you get to understand what's happening with the program. What Dreamweaver does is write code, but it does it in a very WYSIWYG environment, so you don't have to touch the code, but it's important to know what the code does. So we're going to click this tab called Code. Now, these are known as tags. This is a tag. This is a body tag opening body tag. This is a closing body tag. Closing body tag has the forward slash. This is a closing HTML tag. So up on top of the page is my opening HTML tag. So this content that we just pasted into our document, this first piece of content is inside the paragraph tag. P for paragraph. This is a paragraph tag. Paragraph tag opening down here to the right. You'll see paragraph tag closing, which is off the screen here. Okay, so I have an opening paragraph tag, closing paragraph tag. So what Dreamweaver does is you tag content, then we make rules for the content. So as an example, here's my four or five paragraphs that I simply copied and pasted. So I want to make a new paragraph. So I put my cursor right here and hit the return key. That creates a new paragraph. Okay, I'm going to put the cursor right here and I'm going to hit the return key. Okay, I'm going to put my cursor right here and I'm going to hit the return key. So that by default creates a new paragraph. Now, why is that important? Because these are separate paragraphs with the paragraph tag. Okay, so wherever it return key, it created a brand new paragraph. So it separated this text from this text inside of a p tag. Dreamweaver did this for us by simply hitting the return key. 
Now, don't confuse the return key with the shift return key. The shift return key will make a new line break, but not a new paragraph. Now, this symbol doesn't publish, it's just I have my invisible characters on, which we'll talk about in another video. So shift return is not the same as return. Now, just like in Microsoft Word, I can tag my content. So I can double click a word as an example. I'm gonna double click this word, come down here to my property palette, and I'm gonna click the B for bold. This make that word bold. I'm gonna double click this. Down here, B, B for bold. Now, what this did, this created the strong tag or the B tag. I have my preferences set to strong tag. So if I select the tag, that's gonna select the strong tag. If I select this down here, this is the P tag. This is the body tag. So tags are very important. You're gonna hear me say this a lot throughout the course of this video series. So body tag, select the tag. It selected the entire body tag. I put my cursor here. I'm not selecting anything. I'm simply putting my cursor here and hitting the P tag. P selects that particular paragraph. If I put my cursor here, it selects that particular paragraph. If I put my cursor here, it selects the strong tag because that text was tagged with the strong tag by double clicking and selecting the B for bold tag. Double clicking, B for strong tag or bold. Double click, B for bold. Now in addition to the strong tag, also I have the italic tag, which is the emphasis tag, E-M for emphasis. Double click a word and come down here and click this icon for italic. This is now italicized. I double click this word, this is now italicized. I double click this word, this is now italicized. Now again, I don't want to fill your head with code, but if you go to your code mode, you'll see that that word has been surrounded with the emphasis tag. Okay, this word has been surrounded with the strong tag. Opening strong tag, closing strong tag. Now back in the day, we had to learn how to write this code from scratch with a notepad. Just type in the text and type in the code. You don't have to do that. So code mode, design mode, code mode, design mode. Dreamweaver creates the code for you. Okay. So in addition to the strong code, the strong tag, and the emphasis tag, and the paragraph tag, we have what's called header tags, H tags, H1 to H6. H is the biggest, six is the smallest. Now, I don't know what brain trust came up with that, but one is bigger than six. Now, here's a simple, simple way to basically define a header tag. I put my cursor right here, and if I go to my palette, my property palette, right now it's formatted as a paragraph. However, if I click header one, it makes it a header tag by default. Command and Z undoes that. Command and Z undoes. Command and Z redoes. Okay, so undo, redo. So I can undo by hitting Command and Z. I can redo by hitting Command Y. Command Y redoes. Command and Z undoes. Windows, of course, that would be Control Y, Control Z. Now, I want to share with you the simple, simple shortcut techniques. Header tags are per paragraph, which means I can't just select this word and give it a header tag because header tags are per paragraph. Now, I could, again, I could come down here to my property palette and give this a header tag, or very simply, I can do shortcuts. Command 1 through Command 6. Windows, Control 1 through Control 6. So if I Command key 1, there's header 1. Command key 2, header 2. Command key 3, header 3, etc., etc., etc. So I have tagged that paragraph with a header tag. I'm going to tag this paragraph with an H2 tag. I'm going to tag this paragraph with an H3 tag by hitting Command 1 for this paragraph. Command 2 for this paragraph and Command 3 for this paragraph. Make a change, save a change. You'd have to get into Command key S, save your changes. As you make changes, 
save changes. You'll hear me say this a lot throughout the course of the video. So, so far, this is very, very simple stuff, guys. I simply copied from the web. I paste it to the page. Copy, paste. Then I can basically make some simple adjustments down here.